what's going on. I want to know why. Jenna? Oh, my God. And she was lying there unconscious. Unconscious? Or dead, Mrs. Fayette? That is... Hold it. Hold it right there. Say that. I said this whole world is one hassle after another, and I won't take it. Well, it's just so damn easy. You're doing the whole thing in your head. I don't want to hear that ever again. What is it with you? You're going to start this every time like clockwork when I'm ready to split? Well, all I ask is why you'd have to buy another one. Why? You can keep your voice down. To hell with the neighbors! Don't have this baby, please. The baby? What about me? God is killing me. Sorry, I all you're trying to do is bug me to death. I am dying in this house. I only... Ask why I'd buy another guitar, right? Well, it's because guitars are the way I pick up the bread to feed this family. It's my job, my work. But that's an acoustic. You can't even use it. Well, maybe I can use it for a little pleasure around here. It's more than I've been getting from you. Your nag, oh, nag, you're nag, nag. Oh, you're the always complaining about film. And you better... And, are you going to get up? Are you going to get out of here? Ah! Ah! Not particularly, no. I can tell. <laughs> Pepper, this is the commissioner's niece and these are freebies. It would be nice if you looked like you were enjoying it. I will when she starts smacking him. Could the sergeant have another bottle of champagne, please? Excuse me, is Mr. Royster here? Yeah. Right over there. That's Mr. Royster. Mr. Royster? Uh, telephone, Mr. Royster. Pete, it's you, Mr. Royster. Oh, Mr. Royster. A classy joint. Uh, don't forget the champagne. Okay? This will be your tailor. I think the new overalls are ready. I hope so. Hello. Hello there, big boy. I had a little trouble tracking you down. But I made it. It's amazing. This is the mystery lady with the furry voice. Peter? Uh, yes, uh, you certainly did track me down again, didn't you? You don't mind if I call you Peter? Absolutely not. I rather like it. It's a lot nicer than Mr. Royster. So, uh, what's happening, my darling? Peter, I want you to know this. I can't stop thinking about you. I try, but I can't. Uh... It's a common ailment. I'll tell you, I have a prescription uh, that I know you could use. 
But in order to uh, fill it out, I'm going to have to have somewhere to send it. And also your name. Oh, that is uh, irrelevant. Totally. The thing is, I adore you, Peter. <sighs> this is absolutely amazing. I don't understand how she understands where I'm at. Do you know that last week she actually had me paged in the health food store? Maybe she's after your macadamias. Don't fight it, lover boy. Obviously, it's bigger than both of you. Listen, did you at least get her name this time? No, all I know is that she said to me that I cannot live without you. Right, Pep? Mm -hmm. Well, well yeah, I can understand that. I think maybe she just crashed out of a local funny farm. <laughs> Sit, 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 sit. I'll get water. I'm okay. I just want to be alone and go to bed. I'm, I'm okay. You're all right. Look at you. You can hardly stand. <laughs> the furry yeah. boy. Really? Just <laughs> hey, one more. Hey, hey, well, that's not much, but I want to propose a toast. <laughs> to the prettiest cop I know. Oh, oh. Mr. Western. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, I, I don't want any more. Are you sure you want to have one more? I have had enough. Not even for Mr. No, no, Rice. She's right. She's not going to do it. <laughs> Give mine no, to the piano not player. No, no, i got to get her home. Are you sure, yeah. Chief? It's get getting late. It was great. Yeah. Thank you. we got a job to do had in the morning. a good time. Now, darling, please, you're going to be worried about the baby being with me. I'll be insulted. In fact, I'll just be double insulted. Mary, oh, maybe he keeps crying. Darling, I, if he cries, I will know what to do. Believe me, I have been through this. Now, you just get here in the cab. That's wonderful, darling. Sit down. Be very comfortable and careful. That's it. St. Michael's fast. Go. Baby, Mama's going to be all right. The doors are open, Crowley. Oh. There we are. Anyway, this one lady went to sleep in this room for the turpentine fumes. And she never woke up. She died. She died? Yeah, from internal combustion. She blew up. <laughs> I don't believe. What are you having trouble? Oh, I, got a, I got a new lock. I'm going to open Why'd you get a new lock? You were just getting good with the old one. Now. Now what? Now then. Saved again, Crowley. Yeah, what is it? Billy, calm down. It's not the duty officer. Miriam, how's my favorite dynamite lady? Well, except for the sinus is fine. You? Oh, I'm great. And Pepper? Pepper's great. In fact, she's right here in front of me right now. Oh, you want a job? Well, you might say that. I'm working on it. Let's put it that way. Listen, Billy, I called because there's some big uh, trouble with the neighbors next door. If Saul Rester Saul were still alive, he'd be over there with his badge and gun so fast they wouldn't know from what. Listen, I, uh, I, I hope I'm not uh, disturbing you, huh? No, it's, it's fine, Miriam. Uh, what kind of trouble? It was my fault. I was hassling my husband about something, and he got upset, and... Sweetheart, I'm with you. <laughs> I don't know if I can go back in there. Was your home, darling? It was. Look, uh, Shauna, I've lost a husband, and you've lost one in kind of a way. But you know what I think? God and time, they both help heal. Enough for us to carry on. You know what I mean? Uh, would you like us to come in for just a little while? Bill makes a great pot of coffee. Would you like that? No, I think I have to go in by myself and be alone with my son. 
Well, you've got Miriam, and you've got Bill and me, so if you ever need us to help you over the rough spots, you call us, okay? Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, Peter. Mary Lou? I happen to have a middle name. Daphne. I've been waiting a very long time for this. You have? You certainly have a remarkable way of getting dates. You don't think I got too much of this uh, husky musky on it? Mm, you smell divine. I can smell it in here. Ah! <laughs> Peter, Peter, don't you remember the date? What? Seven fun-filled years with CCU. Huh? Maybe you'd rather you. forget it. Ah. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank Steve. you, Pepper. And you. <gasps> Peter, <laughs> Peter, I can't live without you. No matter. Don't how... talk, you fool. <laughs> Come here. Hey, I'll take what's left. <laughs> My chair, hunky. Make me, motor mouth. They busted her. They busted her. Now you better tell that little dictator that I want my bread back. You set it up. You're coming on kind of heavy, ain't you? The heaviest, Cora. Maybe it'll be you ends up dead. Yourself. Pepper, I like everything you make, including your coffee. You look like Socrates about to polish off his hemlock. Socrates, huh? Not Isn't that the guy who used to make uh, <clears throat> coffee for up in R&I? Mm -hmm. Hey, watch it! Oh, I'm sorry, Pepper. Are these yours? Uh, yeah. Yeah, Captain. Sure. Oh, but, yeah, okay, how's a half hour? Good, I'll see you then. It's Miller. Did you know to... that these were new? Oh, I'm sorry. I'll tell you what, I'll get you another pair. I don't want another pair. I want these. They're from France. I paid $37 for them, plus tax. You're kidding. That's ridiculous. Pepper, I said it, okay? If I'm anything, I'm a man of my word. I'll buy you another pair. $37. Plus tax. Carlos Rumenez. Former colonel, Cuban Secret Service, and today, 
one of Mr. Castro's least favorite exiles, and probably the wealthiest on the West Coast. According to one of our snitches, it's Rubinez's junk that finds its way into the women's county jail. That's pretty small potatoes, considering his wealth, isn't it, Captain? I mean, he'd, how much could he net? Maybe a grand or two a month? He's a major source. And our best guess is that his people take care of those inside and use them for mules when they get out. Mm. When do I get booked into jail? Not you. I want you and Crowley to concentrate on Ruminez. Now, we got another girl that's going to work undercover in the jail. Yeah. She should be here any she minute. She better be a good actress. That's tough in there. We're lining up some intelligence on the organization right now, especially on uh, one of the colonel's nephews. He's reportedly in on this. Lover boy type, as they say. Now, even the uncle is still quite a ladies' man. Now, maybe you or our gal will come up with enough to tie them both together. <clears throat> Yeah. Send her in. Here she is now. Hi, sorry I got held up. Hi, Cut Bessie. Back. Officer Bessie Dowling, Sergeant Crowley. Hi. Pleased to meet you. And obviously you know Sergeant well, Anderson. This is the girl you're sending in on that kind of an assignment? I volunteered, Pepper. It's already made up. I mean, I'm going to cop to a shoplifting beef and do 30 days. They'll figure out in 10 minutes that she's a cop. Captain, you can't send in somebody green like this. You... Wait a minute, Bessie. Have you ever been in jail? Almost. Now, I don't know what almost means. I mean, just yes or no. Have you ever been locked up in a jail? No. Thanks to Sergeant Anderson. Yeah, I got her off the hook a couple years ago. Yeah, she's the reason I became a cop. She talked me into it. <laughs> Bessie. This is too tough. You need experience before you do something like this. I can handle it. I know I can handle it. I think she can, too. And anyway, the decision's been made, and she's it. Pasa, viejo. Va bien, va bien. Va bien, va bien. Va bien, va bien. Y mira para allá. So, uh, how are things happen? Well, we will have a cut bag on the streets by the morning. And by the way, I've set aside a consignment for your lady friend at county. Uh-huh. Well, that's pleasant news to tell her when I see her. In exactly 40 minutes. Uncle Carlos, one moment, please. I have a question. When are you going to give you more responsibility? Mm -hmm. When I think you're ready. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. I believe that's St. Matthew's. It is, verse 25. You know, Cora, sometimes you really amaze me. Oh, that was my mom on Miss Oak, and she was always spouting, uh, quoting from the good book. <laughs> I wish mine had. Maybe I wouldn't be in here now. Well, babe, you are in here. Now, remember, I was in here for a long year. First an inmate, then a trustee, right? Mm -hmm. Well, girls, you see, the main thing is that while you're in here, you learn to pray, to believe. Then you realize that when you get out, there's a beautiful world waiting for you. Not the emptiness we came in from. Is it all right if I take my Bible with me now, Miss Duncan? Of course, Cora. <laughs> Oh, Cora, Bessie, 
Hello. Car's a trustee. She'll help you learn the ropes. Now, here's your own private room. You keep your nose clean and obey the rules. sent this down. Name's Armando Gomez. It's Colonel's nephew. Who led that on you? Sergeant E. Baird in New Orleans Police Department. They busted some guy named Frankie Alva with a couple of OZs. Claims he was dealing for Gomez last summer. Give me a complete background on these two. Make it fast, me. Got it. Like we always do. around and everything appointed to you get lost hey babe did you notice one extra deputy on the floor so what I don't know it just seems like she's looking or searching for something no Think so? How well do you know New Orleans? Oh, we used to lay over there when I was still flying. You know, sometimes I miss being a stewardess. Yeah, well, now you're from there. This is your Louisiana driver's license. Eve Rondo. How come I'm always Eve? Oh, well, it's a nice name. Yeah, well, it doesn't even touch Cajun Lamont. Cajun Lamont? That's me. That's my, uh, that is, uh, that's Cajun's itinerary. Notice how he loves to go to the track every afternoon? And on the rail, driving into the turn, it's a million dollars on the rail. Mr. Baby, second on the inside, coming up fast is Cost Salad. Out of the turn, and heading for home. It's the violation, Cost Salad, moving up fast. And here comes Larry Dyson. Come on, Larry Dyson. Come on, let's go, let's go. Now they're neck and neck. Larry Dyson is dropping back. Mr. Maybe and Cost Salad, and at the finish, it looks like Cost Salad and Mr. Maybe. Larry Dyson is his third I'm by sorry. a lane. sorry. Well, I guess you can't pick them all. Well, you can, Cajun. Four in a row. All dead last. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm gonna make it up on the next one. I got me a hot tip on Brazen Lady. Yeah, let me put you here. That third race is now official. With your permission, may I offer a word of advice? Brazen Lady's acquitted. She'll run a fast six furlongs, and then she will die like a dog in a stretch. But... Uh, my friend got a hot tip on him. I guess you heard. Yes, I did. My friend has a hot tip, and I'll give it to you. The Coco. Aspirations out of Salty Dan. Oh. Oh, well, how much should I bet on him? Oh, nothing. I'll do it for you. $100. And if you lose, yeah, it's on me. Oh, by the way, the name's Mun. I'm Eve Rondo. Hello? And out of the turn, the Coco running strong, and it's Brazen Lady and Come on, Brazen Lady! Neck and neck. Let's it's go, let's Brazen go! Brazen Lady up front, the Coco moving up fast under the whip. It's the Coco and Brazen Lady. Brazen Lady and the Coco from the outside. It's the Coco. The Coco by his own. Second Brazen Lady, third Queen of the Nile. Hope they don't try to charge me with the bath I just took. What's the matter with you, honey? I head to Coco on the nose. That's a hundred dollar ticket. What'd you do, stick a pin in the program? No, that, uh, 